week I want you to go grab some old leftover papers from your other projects you know that stash that you keep because you you don't feel you're quite ready to throw them away yet but you're not sure what else to use them for you're saving them right <laughs> Well, this is the project that you've been saving them for because I have got a creative exercise for you today that I'm calling Paper Doodles. So as well as this paper, you're going to need a heavyweight paper, like a mixed media paper, some scissors and your favourite glue for paper. And you can see exactly what I'm using in the description below. And whilst you're there, do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss your weekly art tips, tricks and inspiration. And you guys all know, likes, comments and shares, they all go a long, long way to help us YouTubers keep on making the videos that you love. So thank you so much for all your support. Right, are you ready to paper doodle? And yeah, so paper doodling. Paper doodling, it is collage, but it's collage with commitment. <laughs> because I want you to cut out your shapes and stick them down immediately. So no cutting out shapes and then placing them on the paper and fiddling about, seeing where you want to put them, working out the composition. That's just ordinary collage. What we're going to do is paper doodling. And I want you to think about it as if you've got a pen and a piece of paper and you're just putting lines down and building your doodle up line by line. So with paper doodling and how we're going to do that, cut out one shape at a time, then stick it to the paper just as if you've added that line of pen or paint with a brush. So this is a no return project. You can't go ripping up those pieces of paper because you've put them down in the wrong place. Once they're down, that's where they're gonna stay. But you can keep working on it and you can keep building on it. So basically what we're doing is mark making, but with paper. So be bold and I know you can do it. So the paper doodles that I am making today, they're organically growing, so they're intuitive and I'm just really going to let the flow sort of take me wherever it wants to go. And I really encourage you to have that same sort of attitude when you come to make your paper doodles. Try to let go and not worry too much about it. Now I'm going to share two different types of paper doodles to get your creative brain whirling and remember that yours do not have to look like this at all. It's all about expressing yourself and making your own marks. And the first paper doodle inspiration is quite minimalistic and I've used big shapes for this collage. So you can kind of watch it as it grows. Now to help me do this, I've organized my papers by colorway. So I've got them in piles of similar colors and they're spread around my desk so that I can easily pick out the ones that I want. And again, I'm not overthinking that either. It's not too different from if you were to spread out your pens in front of you. And the gluing down of each piece really helps you to cut down on that overthinking and helps you not to try and plan it so that you can get into that truly organic spirit of doodle flow. Because the last thing you want is to be wasting your time second guessing yourself. But super handy tip is to glue in the middle of the shape so that you can snuck things in underneath later in the process if you want to. And you can also add more glue to the pieces later if you find them flapping about and that bothers you. The second piece is going to be smaller and more complex and a lot more intricate than the first piece. So two very different styles just to give you some contrasts and something to have a play with when you come to do your paper doodles. So you can go as small and as intricate as you want really with your paper mark making. If you find that it's kind of tricky holding those small paper pieces and it's a bit fiddly to handle, then use some tweezers to hold the pieces and it does really help. Don't forget we're still cutting out the shapes and gluing it in place, each one, one after another before moving on to the next shape. Now I really enjoy layering my doodles and you might have noticed that when you've been watching the others that I've done and that have been on my channel recently. Like I did the acrylic paint one and soft pastel doodle a couple of weeks ago and then last week there was the watercolour and ink doodle. And I'm going to do that as well this week by layering up my paper. But I'm not going to add in any other medium at the moment for this. It is all going to be about the paper itself. But each of these papers, they all have different mediums on them. And I love how cutting out project papers makes you look at the colours and the patterns and the textures in, in a new way, doesn't it? 
This is a totally great way to use up leftover papers from other projects. But you could also use this technique with patterned papers. You could use it with ephemera, you could use it with magazine pages, old book pages, all sorts of things for your paper doodling and mix those up as well and, and use different things together. And I've purposely picked out papers today that are of a similar weight and a similar type for this doodle and also the last doodle as well. But you could, again, you could change it up and use textured paper or mix up the papers different weights. You could use vellum, you could use corrugated card, for example. There are just so many variations you can paper doodle to your heart's content with. Now, another thing you might want to think about and some more ideas for you, you could change up what kind of support you're using. So for instance, I'm using a heavyweight paper here and as it's a mixed media paper it, it kind of works well with a whole range of different mediums and it takes this glue really really well but you could happily do this technique in your art journal or on a canvas on cardstock whatever you fancy trying and when you do decide what support you want to use and have a think about also what kind of glue you're going to need to work on that support and what will work well with the papers you've chosen and the surface that you're going to use and as a lot of you know, because I've mentioned it before, my go-to glue does tend to be a gloss regular gel and I keep it in an old PVA glue bottle that I repurposed for my gel medium. And it's just super handy because it means that I can use this really handy applicator tip. But, you know, use whatever glue you like to use and that works for your situation. Other things that you might want to consider as you work on building up your paper doodle is that you're using paper so you have a unique set of mark making opportunities that you just don't get with pens and paints such as when you cut out a shape you often leave behind a new negative shape and these can make interesting shapes in their own right so don't feel you have to neaten everything off into perfect squares or circles or whatever shape that you're using and do include some of those unusual negative space shapes as well, whatever curves or anything that you've got there that will just sort of make an interesting paper mark on your project. Your cutout lines, they don't have to be perfect either, so you can make those however you want. And think about the different edges as you would if you were, say, using a brush and doing some dry brushing for example and when we do the close-up a little bit later you'll be able to see that my cutout lines they're not smooth at all or perfect and I kind of like them like that because it makes it something that's unique to you and unique to your paper mark making you could easily go even more prominent than I've been doing here and make them an absolute feature of your piece and there's lots of things you can do as it is paper so have a think about things like you can make the edges jagged or feathered bumpy really super smooth you could even add a fringe if you like and make something that's a bit more dimensional you might as well use all the properties that make this medium unique and interesting to work with and you know just have a little bit of play and discover where you can take it so I briefly talked about the fact that this paper has got a lot of different mediums on it and also I've used a lot of techniques in them as well. So I've got some papers that were printed, some papers that I've just put washes over, all sorts of different things. And for what I want to do with this today, it doesn't really matter whether I've used a permanent medium like an acrylic paint or an acrylic ink or whether I've used one that would still be water soluble if I was to layer over the top because I'm not planning to layer over the top this artwork is just going to stay as it is it's going to be a paper doodle and that will be the finished project but if you wanted to go on and use your paper doodles and layer over the top of them then you might have to give a little bit of a thought as to what is actually on the papers in the first place and just be careful that if you are going to layer over the top with a liquid layer that you might have something on there that's water reactive so just pick stuff that's either not water reactive or that if it is water reactive it's going to react in a way that you'll be happy with
So here's the two pieces side by side and that first paper doodle, the one on the left, I've, I've actually given that one a title and I'm calling it Parent and Child. I don't know when I was looking at it that kind of popped into my head and I think it kind of works. I liked the way the large blue shape protected the smaller shape within it and I think that's what made me think of the title. The one on the right, I don't have a title for that one yet, so that one that's like more layered and more intricate, if you can think of a title for it I would love to hear it because you always come up with some really good suggestions for titles. Usually I'm not that good with titles, so please do, if you've come up with some idea then put it in the comments, I would love to hear it. So if you're looking for some more creative ideas to get you mixing your media, then watch these videos next and I'll see you over there.